to do an 80 kilometer off-road. The locals have told us it's going to be long, it's going to be tough. I don't think it's going to be any harder than what we've done before. We are Nick and Mathilde, and in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia and Africa, we want to see it all. This is day 618 and we are in Argentina. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. Last week, we welcomed Nick's mother and brother Alessandra and Phil, who are now traveling with us in Patagonia. Together, we drove down on Chile's famous Patagonian road, the Carretera Austral. We left you, we were crossing the border with Argentina. This week, we are taking the back roads to some of the most iconic landmarks of Patagonia. Through Argentina, we will reach the famous peaks and glaciers more to the south. Will the family succeed the 4x4 tracks we planned for them? Are those Patagonian peaks as impressive as they say? Our little convoy is ready to go explore. Wow! Wow! Cool landscapes. since 180 kilometers is right here and it's pretty cool because we were able to bring uh, Phil and Ale to the desert really with just us and nature here it is going full speed we are about to reach the beginning of our 4x4 track the one we plan to follow to reach our Christmas destination for the evening at that point, we cross the remote village of Lago Posadas and are pleasantly surprised to find a gas station. Pleasantly surprised indeed. As far as we had planned, we knew we would be short on fuel, so this gas station provided us a bit of relief. But there's going to be inclinations, so you guys will go slower, yeah, okay. but it'll be fine. And if it feels horrible, we just turn around and... Done deal, we do the hard one. We do the hard road? Yes, hard, do the hard, hard road. Hard. Let's do it. We never shy away from a challenge. Never, oh. never, never. <laughs> Light 4x4 apparently, so should be fine for them. It's all perfect. We got a bit worried about the estimate of our new friend. As such, we might never make it for Christmas Eve at the location we had anticipated. We don't lose faith and go for it. Worst case scenario, we will celebrate Christmas on the tracks. So we're gonna do an 80 kilometer off-road. The locals have told us it's going to be long, it's going to be tough. I don't think it's gonna be any harder than what we've done before. So let's see in how long we do the off-road. Some locals said it will take eight hours, others said it will take four, so we have no idea. Uh, but first things first, tire pressure, and then let's go. And there's tons of switchbacks right here.
massive camper killing it doing so well and the driver and the driver amazing job no. amazing job that's good enough cool awesome let's do it and this, the roads are very steep not super challenging but very steep and sometimes tilted and mom's car is very very tall so on the turns it really feels like a skyscraper going left and right well warmed up by this tricky initial section the rest of the track seems like a walk in the park and what a park the Perito Moreno National Park. Hundreds and hundreds of kilometers from the closest town by gravel road. We made it in the National Park Perito Moreno. It's very remote, not many people know it, but there are free cabins, free mountain huts all around the park. It's gonna be super sweet. So we have to kind of prepare ourselves because they're I mean, there's nothing, it's a refuge. Um, and we'll spend Christmas in there because it's 24th of December today. And for dinner is fondue. So let's hope we can make it. And it is chilly, so we don't have, <coughs> we don't, we have to bring all of our covers and uh, everything, but it'll be sweet. We look a bit messy, but it's because we don't have like camping equipment compact for everyone. And it's okay because our cabin is probably the closest to the parking, so it shouldn't be more than, yeah, just a few minutes. More beds. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Anik, Mathilde, and family here on the 24th of December. Feliz Navidad. And look what's inside. Feliz Navidad. Look. It's insane. It's Why Alfa it's Horus. Nice. Hold on, hold on. And they made us a whole. Tom! Tom! Six. Wishing you all a top day out here in this awesome place. You are all absolute legends and hopefully we can meet up again further down the road. Hopefully this gets to you as we were here on the 20th. Enjoy the Alfa Jores. Tom, Jerry, <laughs> uh, Sally and Claire. Claire. Oh, oh, <laughs> Welcome to a national park, Perito Moreno. We have just found our refuge called Refuge Huala. And this right here is the inside of the cabin. There are three beds up there, three beds down there, a little table. The idea is tonight we're having fondue. In this little box here, we have extra wood. Fire that Mathilde started. 
Now there are a few seats. These seats actually open up. This one has a few cleaning products. And uh, that's about it. Last minute Christmas preparations here. Yeah. This is for mom's gift. We're doing a woodworking workshop. We found we were a little bit last minute on the on the card. So found a block of wood. And I'm just gonna chisel workshop in here. Yeah. And then we're just gonna place the, the wood on the on the table and be like, here you go, and she has to figure out a little bit what it is. Yeah. Workshop. 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 We spent the following days exploring the park. As beautiful as it is, it is so windy that for the first time our drone could not keep up with us. See those images? Well, this is the drone pushed back by the winds and we could not do anything about it. We enjoyed small hikes and a sheltered camp spot and head back to the main road. But even there, we are still far from everything. Here there's the sign, we just reached the main intersection. And the first like fairly consistent towns are like 372 kilometers away, 409 kilometers away or 486 kilometers away. It's crazy. For now, we are just in the Argentinian Pampa. You look left, there's nothing. You look right, there's nothing. You look that way, also nothing. There's nothing. But somewhere there's Philippe and Alessandra. Even after a full day of driving, we still didn't make it to one of the small towns of Patagonia. But it's alright, because on the program tonight, is Overland hairdressing. It is scissor time. Mathilde's getting a haircut from me. We upgraded our scissors. Last time we had IKEA scissors for a euro. These ones are, I think, three euros. Three euros from a Colombian store. So they're a bit better. You ready? So my haircut is done. Nick does an amazing job as a hairdresser. And because it was so well done, now everyone wants a haircut from Nick. Hairdresser Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go back to Berlin with this new haircut? I am, no. I am prepared. So Needs to grow a little bit. Nick Salon. Nick Salon, next, next in line. Next in line, the mother. The hairdresser gets a haircut. The last haircut is done. <laughs> With this beautiful light, we conclude our last night lost in the middle of nowhere. The next day, we take the road to a first of the legendary landmarks of Argentina we're going to explore. And on the way, we discover a sad reality. Everywhere we go, the country's properties are fenced. As a result, kilometers and kilometers of fences going along the main routes. On those barbed wire fences, the local wildlife is a victim. We're continuing down road 40 with our new haircuts. No one on the road, but we see everywhere. Skeletons of guanaco stuck on the fences. Poor guy. Yeah, 
The wind in Patagonia is so insane. Uh, I have to fight with the wind right now with the steering wheel. If you can, if you notice, the steering wheel is like always. I'm always tilting it back to the right, and as soon as I let go, the car goes straight to the left, and you can really feel it. Now the second thing is also because the wind is coming from in front of us. Our consumption usually being 11 liters per 100. Right now it's at 20 to 24, which is huge. Literally crazy winds in Patagonia. And now that we have the wind behind us, we are consumed, we're at 110 and we're only consuming four to three liters per 100 kilometers. Go! <laughs> the calculations was just right. They just got onto the reserve of their fuel. We're still halfway, but they got on the reserve. So luckily we have our jerry can and their jerry can to refill because we still have about 170 kilometers until uh, El Calafate. We're flying with the wind to our new destination, El Calafate, when the unexpected and unwanted happened. It looks like we have our first problem, uh, vehicle problem. It looks like mom's vehicle, uh, they said a tire blew up. so. We're gonna see that now and ooh. watch out behind you there's a truck yeah oh yeah their tire exploded it is not just uh, popped it's not just punctured it, it exploded it's really an uncomfortable situation to change the tire right by the road plenty of winds and sideways fixed the tire refueled the empty tank of phil and alessandra and we went on to celebrate in town with a good argentinian asado the following days we visited the fascinating perito moreno glacier a major patagonia landmark and one of the few glaciers on the planet that is not receding, as it accumulates about as much ice as it's losing every year. Car fixed and humans rested, it is time for us to discover the last location of our journey, and probably one of the main symbols of Patagonia. What a view! Crazy beautiful view. We just arrived in El Chalten and it is super nice. Super, super nice. We can see the Fritz Roy up there. Fritz Roy. Dee, 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 dee. This place is very, 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 very cool. Come on, complete nature all alone. And you can just see the roof of uh, S Cargo, uh, which is the name of the Toyota Hilux. And um, yeah, now we're going to make dinner, pasta with uh, pelati and tuna. So. Here we go. I'm almost certain that we have the best cooking station in the entire Patagonia. But if someone can prove me wrong, do it. Phil is cooking the pasta because we need tons of energy because tomorrow we're climbing the Tres, Tres Lagos route, which will bring us to the best point of view on this bad boy. All the way up there. Good morning. Today we hike to Mount Fritzroy, which is technically via the Laguna de los Tres, which is a 11 kilometer hike one way, so 22 both ways. You can have a very good view on Mount Fritzroy and a beautiful Laguna. So that's the plan of today. We're going with Phil as well. It's now 7 a.m. and we're almost ready to go. It's gonna be sweet.
we've just done 4.4 kilometers on our on our map, so we're almost halfway up, but it's getting really hot. And it is now, what time is it? 8.40 in the morning. So we've been hiking for exactly an hour. We've already done four and a half kilometers, pretty good. But this ray will be done in uh, less than seven hours. There's a lot of inequalities on this planet, one of which is leg lengths. So I'm mentioning this because, let's see, feel and neck are a bit like German Shepherds and in comparison, I'm a corgi in terms of leg length. If they start walking normally, then I cannot catch up. So that's why you see less of neck and feel in the middle of the hikes. That's just physical, logical explanation. But we'll find them toward the summit. At that point, my brain is calculating the following. If each of my legs is approximately 10 cm shorter than the guy's, then my steps would be an average 15 cm shorter. For a step of 60 cm for me, it would be 75 cm for them, or 25% more than me. As a result, is it correct to think that I need to use 25% more energy to keep up with them? So instead of filming them, I'll show you images of gorgeous wildflowers as I'm trying to catch up. You ready for the good view? Bam! Awesome. Do you see that Fritz Roy, the highest peak there, and the cloud on it? So El Chalten in the indigenous language meant a smoking mountain, and that's because the clouds would actually get stuck to the mountains and it would look like a smoking mountain because of the clouds. <laughs> Climb was steep, but look what I have in front of me. It's, I don't know, it's from another galaxy, I guess. Boom! <laughs> mm, that's Laguna de las Tres. Three and a half hours. It was awesome. It was tiring. And we have alfajores for dessert. We've got ham and cheese sandwiches with tomatoes and salad. And a bit of mayo. With a beautiful view, we are pretty good. Warm. I'm living the Alpha Hall Fitzroy life right now. It's very nice. Honestly, very, very, very cool place good hike. Pretty cool, we're in the heart of Patagonia. Anyways, cheers. If you've never had an Alfajores, you should try one. They are incredible. And the ones we usually buy is, here, it's a new one. It's Alfajores Clasico. We are not affiliated with them, <laughs> but they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Daniela. We just came up El Chalten and Daniela's like, stop! You're Nick and Mathilde from Next Marian. We said, yeah. And she's like, please let me take a photo. It's been for since Mexico you're following us. Yeah, right? and he's following since uh, uh, Europe, since you left. So yeah. hello, Stain from, uh, from Belgium. We're saying hello all the way from Argentina. So yeah. maybe see you on the road. Today is the 31st of December and we leave Fitzroy in the side mirror to go celebrate together the new year coming. Overland edition, of course, and with a view on Fitzroy, of course. Glasses of metal, where we're gonna put champagne in. We're gonna pop it now because we might not stay awake at midnight. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> but we're gonna start now, we'll see if we make it to midnight. I think we will. Then we've got a nice aluminium plate here. Is it aluminium? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, with a bed of bread. <laughs> chopped finely by Alessandra. Aged. <laughs> Aged, aged bread, bread. Absolutely. unintentionally initially, but caught up now with very useful. Now very useful and perfect for fondue. Uh, behind me, <laughs> I we, have chef. A, we have a we I have a, chef. a bowl of salad, 
that Mixed. and some grated uh, carrots with some tomatoes. It seems there's gin all over the floor <laughs> and on the and on the benches. That's my bad. <laughs> uh, and yeah, things are looking good. We are ready. We are. We are. Thanks, ready. chef. <laughs> And on this first day of the year 2024, it's time to say goodbye. For you guys. Yeah, but, um, this was actually, yeah. What was your favorite thing of the trip? Favorite thing? For me, it was to all the places where we stopped for the night, mm. all the camps, the because we were in wilderness, every time different, beautiful views, no one around, really nice and I think we were surrounded by beautiful nature. We were together but surrounded by beautiful nature. This is what I like the mm -hmm. most. Can you feel? Uh, favorite part? The Christmas meal in the chalet. Fondue in the chalet. Fondue. And then, yeah, that free, that free chalet was nice. And then, uh, yeah, landscape wise, the the part before before Puerto More uh, Perito Moreno National Park. Yeah. The part where <coughs> before the off road, during the off road and just after. I think landscape wise that was the coolest coolest part. Cool. Yeah. And where to next time? Tajikistan. Tajikistan? Central Asia. Cool. I think means Southeast Asia. Somewhere for the food. For the food, mm. for the food, me too. That's where I'm looking for the most. Maybe for get the food. a motorbike, follow you guys. Sweet, sleep in a tent. Yeah. Come on. Ciao. Ciao. Yes. Ciao. Love you. Turn left, Ruta 40. Ruta Bye, mom. All the way to Chile. Ciao. 1,700. Thank you. Ciao. Well, that's uh, that was a little sad, a little bit weird, a little bit. Yeah, just, just like a little... <laughs> so it's always like a little uh, little pinch to the heart when that happens because you're always like, oh, this sucks. But life goes on and we'll see them soon anyways. And we'll see them for sure again, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be an awkward first hour, but it's gonna be cool. So we're going straight south now, they're going straight north. Uh, but we're going the other way for about five hours uh, into Chile. The next mountain range, which is Torres del Paine, we're going to be hiking there. And then going straight south to Ushuaia without any problems. We can't wait, it's gonna be sweet. And the adventure goes on. Albatross is doing great. Matilde, you're doing great. I'm doing great. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Next week, we finish the Pan American. So subscribe to the channel. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be epic and finally we would have reached the bottom bottom of the Pan American with the albatross. See you next week! Bye! Hey, Hold on, there's another one, there's another one. I'm gonna read it. So they put a... Uh, Band-Aid? Band-Aid. Uh, give me the alcohol. Yeah. So they wrote Merry Christmas. How sweet. Oh, he got me. He got me. I don't know if we put, we put it on YouTube, but I think he got me. <laughs> Love Tom and Jerry. Because <laughs> oh we send each other videos all the time like that. <laughs>